In 1681 French-born Denis Pavon made a unique discovery, after an unfortunate accident with a pressure cooker, Papon's attempts to extract fat from animal bones in a steam-induced high-pressure container were a failure when the vessel exploded, however before the unfortunate termination of his experiment. Papon had observed how the steam raised the lid of his pot, it was the inspiration Papon needed to conceive a prototype steam-driven piston. Papon's experiment in its turn formed in 1705, the basis for Thomas Savoy's steam engine, which played such a vital role in the early Industrial Revolution. Papon's chance invention however was not the first steam engine, the ancient Greeks had already been playing around with the uses of steam from the 4th century BC, however the invention of the first steam-propelled mechanism, the Eolipile, dates to the 1st century BC and can be credited to Hero of Alexandria, an Alexandrian scientist and inventor, although classical scientists never fully explored the potential of Hero's Eolipile in ancient times, its technology may have informed steam-based technology even before Papon's time. The Life and Work of Hero of Alexandria Hero of Alexandria was a mathematician, physicist and engineer who lived and worked sometime during the 1st century BC, and who established and ran the Higher Technical School in Alexandria. During his tenure as the school's director, Hero taught and lectured students as well as continuing with his own research projects. Hero was particularly involved in building upon the work of Tesebius, one of the greatest mechanical inventors of the ancient world and a fellow Alexandrian, who had lived two centuries previously. Hero's lecture notes and other papers on physics, mechanics and maths were well thought of as they were replicated often enough for an impressive number of them to survive to this day, their subject matter was varied. In his Hydria, Hero explored the mechanical uses of water while his Bella Poetica, which was influenced by the 4th century BC Athenian architect, Philon and Hero's contemporary the Roman engineer Vitruvius, the tutor and engineer explored new design for war machines. Some of Hero's ideas were particularly original. And on the Diopter Hero explored the possibility of measuring distances using astronomy, he took as his example the distance between Rome and Alexandria, using an eclipse of the moon as his astronomical benchmark, Hero observed the differences between the local times in each city, when the eclipse was visible to calculate the distance, in 1938 Hero's description of this eclipse allowed science historian Otto Edward Neugebauer to match it with the event, which took place in Alexandria at 11 p.m. on March 13, 62 B.C., thus establishing Hero's period as the 1st century BC. It was Hero's pneumatics, however, that tackled the subject of invention, the volume divided into two books, both of which explored various mechanical devices which, when driven by air, water or steam replicated the movements of living things, the book contained many novelties that Hero used as teaching devices for his students. One example was a puppet theater, where a combination of drums and weights moved the strings of the players, Another similar device was a steam-operated temple wonder that turned out to be well ahead of its time, the Yalapile. Hero's Yalapile Hero of Alexandria was not the first ancient scientist to toy with steam-driven devices. According to Leonardo da Vinci, the 4th-century Greek scientist Archimedes invented one of the first steam-driven devices in 330 BC. The invention was a steam-powered cannon, fueled by water heated over coals. According to da Vinci, the device could hurl 70-pound iron balls at the enemy. Archimedes was later followed by Hero's hero, Tesebius, who in 250 BC invented a water-filled metal sphere that rotated when heated or placed in water. It could be Tesebius's device formed the inspiration behind Hero's Eolipile. Hero named his steam-powered machine after Aeolus, the Greek god of wind. His description of the device and how to use it was relatively brief. Place a cauldron over a fire, a ball shall revolve on a pivot began the brief passage in his pneumatics, the Yalapile's operator was then instructed to light a fire under a cauldron containing water, and covered at the mouth by the lid with this, the bent tube communicates, the extremity of the tube being fitted into a hollow ball. The description of the Yalapile's design and use continues as follows, opposite to the extremity place a pivot resting on the lid and let the ball contain two bent pipes, communicating with it at the opposite extremities of a diameter, and bent in opposite directions, the bends being at right angles, as the cauldron gets hot, it will be found that the steam entering the ball passes out through the bent tubes towards the lid and causes the ball to revolve. Although Hero's contemporary, Vitruvius also refers to the Yalapile, Hero's description and explanation of the device's workings is the first detailed account of this particular form of machine, for although Archimedes may have pioneered the use of steam in propulsion, and Tesebius the application of heat to cause rotation, 
Hero's device was the first to combine the two principles to use steam to drive a rotor, in effect Hero of Alexandria had devised an early form of the steam engine 16 centuries, before society recognized its invention. The loss and rediscovery of the steam engine However in Hero's day, the Ialopile was never widely used, for ancient Alexandria was not a mechanized society, and so the machine could only have a limited novelty appeal, at best it would have been viewed as a teaching device, illustrating Hero's principles nothing more, so the description of the Ialopile loitered dormant, and disregarded in Hero's papers, while time moved on and the use of steam faded, in the 10th century, there was a brief revival of interest, when a priest called Gerbert installed a steam-based hydraulic organ in a church in Reims, however it was not until the Renaissance that inventors and scientists once again noticed steam power. These early Renaissance steam machines, were much simpler than Hero's Ialopile although they had the same novelty value, in 1551 an Arabic inventor, Taki Alden created a rudimentary steam turbine, which used a jet of steam to rotate a spit. By the 17th century, the Europeans had joined the trend. In 1615 Salda cause a German engineer who worked for the Elector Palatine of Heidelberg, described his steam machine, a simple device that forced water in a copper wall through a tube through the application of steam. In 1629 an Italian inventor Giovanni Branca constructed a windmill, whose wheel was turned by steam generated in a boiler, the games with steam then continued in England when in 1647, Natnaya mathematician had the idea of powering guns with steam rather than gunpowder. The idea was a non-starter, in fact it was another 30 years, before a serious contender for a steam-powered machine to match, that of Heroes was on the horizon when in 1679, Dennis Papon's botched pressure cooker experiment allowed him to conceive the notion of a steam engine, none of these attempts, however were directly informed by Hero's Yalapile. However it seems that there may have been a serious attempt to utilize Hero's Yalapile and create a steam-powered machine a century before Papon. Documents preserved in the Royal Spanish Archives in Samanca suggest that in 1543, a Spanish naval captain called Blasco de Garay displayed a steam-powered ship in Barcelona Harbor before Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor, the ship incorporated a copper boiler that produced the steam, to turn two large wheels on either side of the vessel thus propelling it through the water without the need for sails. There are problems in authenticating this attempt. Apart from the fact that the steam-powered ship did not take off, the documents referring to the incident only date back to 1826, furthermore the 16th century was not a time Spain was noted to be involved with explorations of steam, however even though the first Italian translation of Hero's pneumatics was still four years away, it is not inconceivable that de Garay had not acquired a working knowledge of Hero's methods from elsewhere, by marrying these methods with elements of Roman and medieval naval technology, it may have been possible to produce a prototype steamship, and the first ever practical application of Hero's Ialopile,